So you're dreaming about moving to Florida. Well, you're not alone. Right now, more than 1,200 people are moving here every single day. And they're attracted, just like we were, to the great weather and year-round sunshine. The gorgeous beaches. The awesome natural parks. The low cost of living compared to other coastal states. And probably the most important factor of them all, lifestyle. Today, we'll cover the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to living here in Florida. Because believe it or not, it's not all sunshine, flip-flops, and margaritas. We'll also share what made us pack up our not-so-little family, move 1,200 miles across country from all the family and friends we'd ever known, and hopefully help you answer that nagging question. Is Florida the right move for you? If we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. We make videos that are all things Tampa Bay. What it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches, and the sunshine. So if you're into that sort of thing, make sure you go down below and click that subscribe button. I'm also a licensed real estate agent and a team leader here with the True Living Group, and we help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the Tampa Bay area. Welcome y'all, and yes, it's pretty obvious that something has changed, and I think it's only fair that after 18 months, you all finally get introduced to the lovely and talented, the one and only, the- The, the one and only? Yep, yeah, the <laughs> Mrs. Kate Alcala. Hi guys, I'm super excited to be here. I'm excited to interview her today, and y'all, we wanted to share this with you because I think there isn't any better way to do this than other than to share the truth, right? And if you guys have been following this channel at all, you know I try to do my absolute best to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to living here in Florida, and we're going to get into those things today. So we want to get into, you know, the, the good first. We want to start yeah. with the things we love about living here in Florida. And the first thing is no different than most people. We moved here for the weather. Facts. Right. We came from, you know, Detroit, Michigan, where it was cold, gray, and dreary for about six and a half to eight months out of the year. You had a very short summer and we were told for years and we were convinced of it too, that the summers are great and the spring is great and the fall is great. And there is some truth to that. Unfortunately, it's not what we were told it was. And you don't know that till you travel. And Florida really gives us what we're looking for in terms of lifestyle and activity outdoors. We have three months that we'll talk about in the in the section that is not necessarily the things we love, but uh, the other nine months of the year are just incredible. I mean, it's mid-May and it is so gorgeous here right now. It's just getting warm and the humidity hasn't set in, so it's, it's ideal. It's been incredible. And that's what brings a lot of people down here. We have two, over 230 days of sunshine. You know, St. Petersburg is called Sunshine City for a reason um, because it is, and we absolutely love it. You know, that's so that's absolutely the first thing that drives people down, and it's definitely one of the things that brought us down here, too. So the second thing on this list is it's the beaches, right, and the natural parks that we have and the parks that we have in general. It's so many different things. It's a place that we can go and we see sunsets as a family, and it's just a way to wind down your evening, which is really nice. Like you have dinner and you pack the kids in the car and you can go walk on the beach, the shoreline, see the sunset. The sunset's different every single time. So you get that fresh air, the vitamin D, and they just get to explore. And the beach really is the reason. It, it's, it stole our heart, right? Like we thought we were gonna live on the Atlantic side. For 10 years, we thought we were gonna live over there. And we came down in 2017 and just absolutely fell in love with the beach here. It's much calmer on the Gulf side than it is on the Atlantic side. And y'all, we get to live on the beaches all the time. As a matter of fact, we're gonna take you to the beach. So make sure you stick around because we're gonna show you the main reason why we decided to make this a home. And the third thing on our list was the affordable cost of living, especially compared to other coastal states. Florida has always been on our heart for a really, really long time, so we weren't really courting other places, but it was always super affordable as far as the cost of living when it came to housing, the cost of living when it came to groceries and gas, and just like the day-to-day -day essentials. You know, being in real estate, obviously, I'm always looking at, you know, what's happening in the marketplace. And when we decided to move here, it was super cheap. And what I mean by that is like, from a coastal perspective, just look at Florida. Miami's 
pays $160,000 on average more to purchase a home. You know, Cape Coral was uh, a little bit more affordable and still is, but for us, it's significantly older. And we, we already knew our kids are gonna be a little weird. We homeschool parents, right? So I'm their mouth. Right, so we wanted to be someplace that was more connected. That's why we ended up choosing Tampa. You know, obviously we fell in love with the beach, but Tampa as a city is really young. It's 36 years of age on average. It's really young and it's attracting a lot of professionals here. If you look at places like San Diego, Los Angeles, Seattle, Boston, anywhere in the Northeast, it's a really good deal here. And it still is, even though prices have dramatically increased. I think we're up 50 or 60% in the time period that we've lived here, which is amazing, but we're still really affordable compared to other coastal regions. All right, another one of these pros for us and things that we love is the fact that there's a lot to do. If you're into the parks, Orlando's just a short drive away, or if you're considering Orlando, that's an option for you as well. But for us, you know, you can get there on a good day, an hour and a half. We've got Bush Gardens, the Tampa Zoo. We've got so many natural parks just around us. We've got, you know, Fort DeSoto and Honeymoon Island. You've got the the springs to the north where you can go see the manatee in the winter and the mermaid shows, which is pretty yeah. cool. And if you're a park person, obviously the mouse's house is always available to you. And it's, it's a great resource. And that's just one of many things. I could sit here and do an entire episode on all of the natural state parks and all the amenities we have access to, but... Florida's really designed to be lived outdoors. And what that brings us to is the fifth thing on our list, and that's lifestyle. For us, it's just where we wanted to be, that we found that we could expand and expose our lifestyle to the best of what we dreamed it could be. It's really about the lifestyle. It's laid back here, especially in the Tampa area, and call it the flip-flop lifestyle, because that's really how it feels. You can show up at the beach, connect with anybody, and people overall are really nice. You'll get in the comments sometimes, and people will say that people aren't nice, and that's just not true. Our experience has been incredible. Incredible. Like, we really have enjoyed the lifestyle, the people that we've met. Most people aren't from here. So there's a very open communal feel because everybody understands what you're going through, which we absolutely love. And it's just been awesome. Lifestyle, hands down, is the reason that we continue to stay here and we don't have any plans to leave. So now that we've shared with you what we love about living in Florida, now we're gonna talk about the the bad and the ugly. You know, I'm gonna kick this off with hurricanes because this is a thing that I get asked every single phone call of someone just like you who's considering moving here or, or investing in the area. They always ask what we call the big three and it's hurricanes. They ask about alligators and they ask about insects typically <laughs> or, or, or reptiles of some sort. It has something to do with pests. We're going to get into all that, but hurricanes for sure. And if you guys, you know, if you checked out the news at all, Hurricane Ian came through last year. It was super scary. I'm not going to lie. I shared this on a live where I literally like lost it. I broke down. I was so emotional about the whole experience. And, you know, we were just absolutely completely spared here in Tampa. You know, we had a fence panel fall down and a little piece of our roof get messed with but our friends and family to the south were not so lucky. And that is something you have to take into consideration. We're extremely blessed here in Tampa. For whatever reason, Tampa has really been very lucky. I mean, it's been over 100 years since Tampa's taken a direct hit. All right, now, while the weather is a benefit, it also can get in a little bit gnarly. And, you know, we just talked about hurricanes, so they kind of go hand in hand here. But I want to talk about the humidity in particular <laughs> and the, the warm weather and the rainy season. And the rainy season technically is July, August, September. It'll start kind of the end of June where everything's going to start getting very muggy and it's going to be very warm and you know on average we're at like 88 to 93 every single day it's but because of the humidity it is so when yeah. it gets so hot all of the humidity comes and then it rains and it cools it down so it does stay below 100 on yeah. regular, and there's this, it doesn't feel that way yep and there's a cycle of like we can kind of set our watches you'll know when it's you know what time the afternoon is because it's raining Sometime between like three o'clock and five, you can set your watch to it. It's going to rain almost every single day during that time of the year. And it's hot, you know, and you, by the end of September, you're really looking for a reprieve. Um, when October comes around and then you start to get some breaks, you're like, oh my goodness, thank you. And then November hits and then you remember why you moved here because November is like, it's like the Lord walks over and hits the, the switch on the oven, turns the oven off and, and takes, the, <laughs> takes the water pan out that was in there. And now it's like, it is incredible. It's 70, yeah. mid seventies every day, no humidity, and you're rocking and rolling for the next eight months again. But you know, if you can't deal with the heat and humidity for at least three months, this is not a good spot to hang out. So the next on our list are crowded beaches and tourist areas, which we love the beaches and we love the tourism because it 
feeds so much into the community and it helps the community grow and do what it is. However, it doesn't change that it's just busy. If you want to go to dinner, you have to plan differently than you would, you know, in the off season. In the beaches, you have to be mindful of the amount of people that are going to be there and parking and all those pieces. And that leads into the extended traffic. Right. So because we're a tourist area, you're dealing with people who are coming from all over the country. So it's going to take you longer to get places. It gets super busy after Christmas until about Easter, but it starts in November and usually wraps up right around Mother's Day when people head back north. It's going to be busy during that time. They bring money. Without the tourism, we wouldn't live here, right? And that's how a lot of people end up in Florida because you come and you get the bug. You get bit by um, not the bugs that we're going to talk about, but you get bit by, by the sunshine bug or the weather bug or the beach bug. And you're like, I got to stay and make this home. All right. So this one is near and dear to my heart. And somehow my story of the palmetto bug has basically become my Margaritaville. And I'll get phone calls or I'll meet up with, with, with clients who come in and they're like, I love your, your, your cockroach story. And I'm like, oh my God, this is how I'm being known. We've got bugs here, y'all. You know, there isn't a frost, there isn't a freeze. Um, so things that live here, they live here all the time. And they were here before we got here and they ain't interested in us being in their spot, right? They're going to be here when we leave. They're going to be here when we leave. And that includes alligators, which we're going to talk about in a second. It includes palmetto bugs, which is the best marketing ploy ever. Uh, it's a giant cockroach. We got lizards all over the place. You do see snakes from time to time. We don't see them as much. And we've never seen an alligator in our neighborhood. So just to give you that perspective. But here's what I want you to know. If you are near a fresh body of water, assume that there's an alligator in it. I don't care if it's six inches deep. No, I'm kidding. That's tongue in cheek. But if, Ten inches. Yeah, if you can't see the bottom, there's an alligator in there. And just think of it that way. I'm. That's not real life. Your life will go a, a lot smoother and it will be a lot safer if you just assume that. So any fresh body of water, okay? I'm not talking about the Gulf of Mexico because the alligators don't hang out in there, okay? I'm talking about fresh bodies of water. So I'm talking about creeks and rivers and inland lakes. Like you can't see the bottom, assume there's a gator in there. Just operate that way. Your life's gonna be a lot easier. Now the bugs, because it's not the mosquitoes here, y'all. That's not the problem. It's the no seeing. These little tiny, like pencil point bugs, just they eat up your ankles and it's real and it hurts and it's not fun and they're worse than mosquitoes because they don't just come out at dusk. They're out all the time. If you are under a tree at a park, they're there. If you're in your backyard and it's a little bit shady, they're there. And then next to that are gonna be fire ants. You have to be mindful of where you're stepping, where you're walking. So like, yes, we have the flip-flop life, but we don't fully live the barefoot life. Listen, y'all, this is just a reality. Where you live, there's bugs of some sort. You West Coasters, I know you're gonna say, we don't have bugs. No, you got scorpions, rattlesnakes, all kinds of other things too. So like, chill out, right? Like, so we've got our own things, we get it. But for the most part, you know, nature is where nature belongs. Yeah. Right. And if you just treat it with that respect, your life is going to be a lot smoother. The fifth one here is the lack of seasonal change. And honestly, I didn't know that this was going to be a problem. No, but it was our first Christmas here. And we came down December 9th of 2018. But we drove home for Christmas. It's when we took possession. But I, I remember, you know, the two weeks we were here, it didn't feel like Christmas to us. It's weird because it's always green there are times you know we have a winter and and we have a well we have a fall junior is what i would call it fall <laughs> junior the oak tree's not as full the flowers on the trees aren't really there but like never bare no and they're never really brown if you're home for the holidays snow outside or you love the the color change in the fall you ain't getting that here right you're not you'll get some color change like in the northern part of florida but that at that point like just go to the mountain the only color change we get here seasonally is from the pollen that you can write your name in on the car oh uh, you should have put that on there that's on the list <laughs> the pollen will be like a quarter inch yeah. thick if you have a white car it will be yellow Dude. that's no 5.1 it's crazy there's no doubt about it that is that yeah, we should have put that on well it is on the list now right so like yeah. the pollen seasonal allergy sufferers god bless you because it is a very difficult roughly three weeks if you do have seasonal allergies that is something to do your research on and take note about of how you're going to handle that well i hope you got a tremendous amount of value out of today's video so far if you know anybody who's considering making the move to florida do not hesitate to share this with them or if you're considering making the move considering investing or relocating to the area all of my contact information is listed down below. Our team would love to serve you, but we do want to share something extra special with you guys. We want to share with you guys today why we decided ultimately to call Florida our home. And, you know, 
having shared all those negatives with you, even the uglies there, the positives well outweigh all of those things we have to deal with. And we really wanna share something special with you now. So let's go check it out. All right, guys. So one of the reasons that we wanted to wrap the video up today this way is to show you guys why we ultimately decided to make the move. Yeah. Um, and you, it's a Monday evening. Mm -hmm. We're 30 minutes away from sunset. You know, we just drove the six and a half minutes it, it took to get down to the beach here parked publicly free no pressure and now we're gonna take the two minute walk around the corner here to take you guys down to a sunset and uh i can't wait to share this with you guys so make sure you stick around uh, but before we leave the video you know obviously there's tons of pros and cons good bad and the ugly of anywhere you decide to live for us like what was our criteria when it came to making the jump to tampa the house is one thing, but location, I had to be within 15 to 20 minutes to the beach. But what we learned when we moved down here, that that's really not that far because of traffic and lights and all of those pieces. So being two miles is about seven minutes. Yep. And it gets us right to Indian Rocks Beach, which is our home beach. We're going to flip it around here and show you guys a minute. All right, y'all, so this is it. Being able to come down here every day. When we moved here, we literally, came, I came down when it rained. Yeah. The sunset, literally, just because the sun would poke out inevitably, and it was just absolutely beautiful. And the, the way it smells, the way that the sand feels underneath your feet. It quiets everything. It really does. There's a lot of peace here, and we're just so blessed. If this is what you're into, right? If you're into that flip-flop lifestyle, the sunset, the walking the beach in the morning, whatever it is, you know, active, just laid back, yep. Florida vibe. You're gonna find that here at Tampa. We're so excited that you shared this time with us today. Again, do not hesitate to reach out. And until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.